All right, so welcome to my Google Sheet where I keep track of all the information needed for these low five wars. So let's give you a little background on what I did, especially for season one, so you can get a little understanding of season two. So just a quick recap of season one, I matched a bunch of the subunits, which you can see over in this section here. I had all the subunits placed together and fight each other. I have, what, uh, 11 teams? And I had them do 10 battles, so they would all fight each other at least once, and then they would have one fight week. And then, so we would have all the girls fight each other, and see who would be the best one in the end. So this section right here is where I kept track of their overall ranks or the wins and losses as well as you could just have a list of all names and in case you were unsure who was in what subunit. On top of that I also had St. Snow and Anais to add a little bit more members and I do want to try to support the rival groups since sometimes they don't get as much love as they really truly deserve. So. Here on the right I had every week where I had the battles and then I would highlight the winners and I had the current records at that time right here. So as you can see as time goes on you get to see more of the records and eventually see who won when. The whole point of this was to eventually decide who goes into a playoff system. So I had 11 teams and I had the top 6 teams go into the playoff system where the 6th and 4th seed, the 4th and 6th best team would fire each other for the spot to see if they could fight the best team which at that time was St. Snow and as well as we had Guilty Kids in the 2nd seed. So we ended up having Guilty Kids winning the finals against St. Snow in the end. The playoffs, I basically had a wild card round which is this round here, a best of 3 and the best of 5 for the 2nd round or the 7th finals and the finals being around the 7th. So each match was having 3 lives. For each individual person on that team so about nine now there are some subunits don't that don't quite have that number so most subunits are of course three but we know like quartz has four and we know diabetes has two so the way i dealt with that was i would have the smaller team would sub in and have like a duplicate of another person so if diabetes were to face a three subunit team i would either duplicate i or kind of pretty randomly I try to make it so they kind of rotated but that's the basic idea so this was the battle of the subunits but I did ask what people wanted so this time I'm gonna be doing years on top of this I also have a stat sheet where you can get a track of every single record so how well did they do in week one you can get a list of their kills and whatnot where I had a total list of kills and deaths so you can get a KD ratio see how well they did overall in that season just to get a quick overview like Mati did very very well while knows me was the worst in the league. So I'm going to do another continuation of that this time and this one I'm going to develop the first year, second years and third years which is more consistent and I tried to do my best to make it so everyone just has three in there to make it more simple and not so hard. So for Muse we have the first year, second year, third year, same thing with Aqua as well as Nijigaku. So the there is Yu Takasaki, which is also second year, but I mean, we don't even know that much about her, and that would make it four, so I'm just going to exclude her, and I don't even know if she's going to be singing songs in the future, but that just messes things up, so for now, I'm just putting in parentheses and ignoring her for now. Maybe a later, I could adjust that. And then we have Arais, which they're all third years, so that works conveniently. Since no, not, it does not, because there's only two members, and it's a first and third year, so... I'm not sure what I could do with that, so unfortunately Snow won't be there. But I said I want to try to support the new project here with the Yui Gaoka girls. But there's five first years least revealed so far. Maybe that'll change in the future. I, I wanted to have them in here, but I, I didn't want to have an uneven number. So what I did was I picked three random girls from there. So I have Kuku, Sumida, and Chisato. And then I put that into one group. And then I took the other two girls and put in the second group. They're all first years. And then I decided I'm going to be the third person in that group. Yeah, it's not canon or anything, but I decided this way I can get into the gameplay so you can see how bad I'm at this game here. And I figured it would be cool to have you guys see how bad I'm at this game. So maybe that'll be interesting for you. So I'll be trying to support the new girls, like literally in this game. So we'll have to see how that goes. But beyond it, it's going to be a pretty similar system. This time I have more teams. I should have what? 12 or whatever 3 6 9 10 11 12 teams here and same playoff system as before same deal here three lies 
and there will be no items and whatnot. So it's going to be the same here. This is a schedule if you want to look up ahead and see who is going to be facing who when. There are going to be no buys because I know a lot of people were asking why didn't this team play. Because there's a buy system. Now there is no need for buys because I haven't even now of teams here. So someone, every team will face another team at least once. So that would mean 11 weeks here. So at the end of 11 weeks, we'll shift to the playoff rounds where the top six teams will face off in L for the overall winner. So of course, Guilty Kiss can't repeat because it's no longer on subunits. So that's basic gist of this. So let's go ahead and jump over to the other side where we'll, I'll start showing you how it's going to be done. Alright, so welcome to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate side of this video here. So since it's the first time we're jumping into the season, I'm going to do a little bit more explaining here. So here I have all the characters which were created through Miis. So I don't know too much about the new girls yet, so of course I'm just guessing and just working with that. I basically just know their looks and that's about it. So I don't know their colors, so I'm just picking stuff. And of course the hairstyles can't perfectly match it because they only give me so many options. And even hair color is... Well, it's, I'm trying to make it as close as possible. I know Kuka's hair is not very close to what it should be. It should be more of like a brown grayish kind of color, but that just doesn't exist in the options. So that's the closest I can get. But hopefully it's close enough to what I can get here. And maybe if it's really inaccurate later, once they remove more information, I could redo the characters. But these are all the characters that I have here. So I have one for each girl here. And most of the rest are the same as they were from Season 1. But yeah, so these are going to be used in the battle here. So let's go ahead and jump to a battle. Alright, so here is the basic setup what I have here. So every single girl is going to be represented through a CPU. I have zero inputs on them specifically. But of course for me, I'll be controlling. So it's just going to be a team battle here. So let me shift on the team battles. So now on the left, we're going to have the Nijigaku first years, which is Katsumi, Rina, and Shizuku. And then on the right, we have the second years for Muse, which is Honoko, Kotri, and Umi. It's going to be a stock battle of three lives, no items, random stage, and the last one standing wins. Alright, so I'll be doing my best to spectate these battles as well as commentating and see how well I do with that. So we're going to start on here. Remember, the scores are going to be shown to the the top right of each girl so that can with a positive number that means they're killing more than they're dying here and of course there are the percentages as normal so early on here we have the Nijigaku first year is doing a little bit better but Kasumi killed herself so never mind that will give you second girls the second years a little bit of advantage here and there goes Honoka and there goes Kasumi a lot of these brawlers seem to struggle with not committing suicide but that's, that's definitely not a good start for Kasumi as she's already died twice here as she, I think she was trying to pursue Honoko kill herself and there goes Kasumi she's gonna steal a life from her teammates and there goes Shizuku as these, these girls just struggle with just basic logic of not committing suicide here Nijigaku is already down to five lives here while we have Muse only losing two lives here, so they still have seven, which is a two life lead. That's me definitely not helping out here. And it looks like Rina will not be able to cover. So now Nichigaku is in a really bad spot here. Got a decent hit here. Nichigaku on the Muse here, which looks like Kotri will not be able to recover here. Looks like Umi is going to be still alive here, as she's still holding on to her original life. And it goes Kasumi, once again getting herself killed, and she's going to steal once again another life here. Putting all of Nichigaku on her final life as no one can steal lives anymore as they don't have any excess lives available here. So we have three lives versus five lives here as looks like Nichigaku first years are just not gonna get this put together here. And yikes, Shizuku gets spiked down here, which should seal the deal here as Kasumi is definitely the reason why this team has no chance at victory here. So this should be a pretty easy win for Muse as they just gotta clean up Rina here. And then, you know, Kasumi is gonna get herself killed somehow, I bet. So there goes Rina. And now we're down to just Kasumi on a 3v1 here. As Kasumi looks like she's gonna go minus 5, 0, and 5. Didn't get a single kill and steal, stole two lives from her teammates. Look. As she, 
She's just gonna vent her die. She, she is getting a few hits here, and that should be it. As Kotori finishes off Kasumi, who probably the worst performance I've ever seen ever. Great start for Kasumi. So, Kasumi, yeah, useless. Worse than useless, honestly. She stole lives from her teammates who were actually doing better here. And she got a 0 and 5, while Umi doing very well here at 4 and 1. And we have Kotori who got 4 and 2, which is still pretty dang good. We have Shizuku doing her best here, doing really the only neutral or actually positive effect on our team here. She got a positive KD with 3 and 2. But you know, Kasumi is just really bad. Although, I guess her damage that she gave Shell that was actually a little more than she took, which is not everyone could say that to be honest here. But she killed herself early so many times. It's, it's just unbelievable if we did a math here. She took 240, divide that by 5. What would that be? Under 50% average here. So you, the way you see it is she died way too early. And it's clearly her fault. There's no reason why you should die in the 50% on average. So honestly, horrendous job by Kasumi here. And that, that's basically it for the story. Just Kasumi ending the game single-handedly. So I guess her impact was instrumental in this game. Let's put it that way. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next match. Welcome to the second battle out of six that we have in this video today. So on the left we have the Yuigako, Yui, <laughs> Yuigaoka number two versus Yuigako, Yuigaka, ugh, Yuigaoka one. So of course I'm a part of the second team for Yuigaoka. So we'll have to see. So I'm really excited to see how these new girls do, and see how <laughs> how I respond to that. So of course I'll be teamed up with Ben and Kano. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy the way this girl turned out, but it could have been closer, but I, I did my best what I could work with, so we'll have to see and see how bad I am at commentating, especially because I have to be concentrating about and see how rusty I am because I haven't played this in months. Alright, let's see how well I do here. I kind of don't remember the controls here. Okay, that's not my teammate. I'm getting a little worried. How do I play this game? Okay, I got a kill sweet. Ow, okay. Ouch. Ouch, I got hurt, but... Looks like my team is doing alright here. Get a combo hit. I'm definitely not familiar with these girls yet, so it's gonna be really hard to know who I'm talking about. Don't even know my moves. Okay, that's what my down B is, alright. Almost. Oh, hello. I'm pretty sure that was Chisato. She's the only white haired girl in Love Life, so it's pretty easy to know that. And, ouch, I died. Okay, I missed my grab there. Ooh, nice hit for me. Who's doing really bad on Sumita? Okay. Oh, thank god I shielded that. Ow. That could've really hurt. The other, the other hit could've really hurt. Nice. They keep rolling- they keep going- falling for that attack, which is great for me. I can just spam that. And keep punishing them with that. I'm such a noob. Ooh, ooh, ow. So, okay, this is just Sumi, eh? I know I got the hit here. Woo, I did things. Alright, that was really one sided here. I was not expecting that to be so much in our favor here, but I guess everyone did well on my team. I guess I did great, because I took advantage of them not paying attention. So I guess I got four kills, but uh, Kano did really well with three kills here. And then Ren didn't even die, which is really great here. We just got nine kills and only two deaths here, so we just absolutely stomped 
well Chisato and Kuku just no <laughs> just I mean combined I guess they pulled the Kasumi but you know there's no being Kasumi with that level of abysmalness but uh, Sumira got two kills which I guess is good for their team standards but still not that great here but a great convincing win I gotta say I didn't even do more damage than I'd taken, so I guess really my teammates <laughs> did did all the work here. Ren doing so well here as well as Kano. Maybe they'll carry me to the playoffs. I I just got kills at the end, so I guess that there was some merit to that. But that is the first win for me and my team. Okay, welcome to the next battle here. So we are currently on our third battle. We have Arise on the left. And on the right, we have the first years for Akua. So, of course, Arise is only third year, so I could call them third years for Arise, but it, they're all third years. So, it's just Arise, anyways. So, we'll have to see how these girls do. If I remember anything from last season, as Arise started out great and then decided not to be great after that. Super Saiyan, I think, was the worst on Arise. And out of these girls for Akua, I, I know Yoshiko tends to struggle a bit. I know she likes to be a fallen demon, but she also t takes that and falls off the ledge a lot too, so we'll, we'll see if she knows to apply where to fall correctly. But I guess initial guess I think that guys can do it, but they've been, they're currently struggling right now as they're taking quite a beating here. I know Hanamara's been pretty decent here, a decent amount of times. Well, let's see if Yoshiko is going to challenge her secret little demon energy. See if she's able to do that because she does have both her little demons here, so maybe that will upgrade her power here. So early on here, we have Hanuman who actually got the first kill, and then that's quite, quite taking quite a beating, and now she finally goes down. As it is down two lives here, and Hanuman are getting both kills here, so Hanuman is currently leading the charge here for Aqua first years. We'll have to see how long she will be alive for as she's starting to take quite a beating here as she's gone to 130% here. And there goes Yoshiko, the first to fall for Aqua, as she, she she tends to be the first one to fall on her team. But still, overall, a pretty dominant lead here for Aqua, first years. Well, let's see if Arai is going to respond. And it goes Anju. Anju is down to her final life here. Super is still holding on to her first life. And Hanamaru finally gets finished off here. She has all the kills for... Aqua first years. And then Ruby is really high percentage here at 170. One big hit and she's toast. And there she is, reading the screen. As Adaiz claims another kill here. So now Adaiz has managed to get three kills as a team so far. So he's still holding on to first life. And then we have Adaiz who's also at the same allies until I think it goes down, but so did Yoshiko. So I guess we're both at five lives each here. Although, okay, so Supercell finally goes down, so Aqua with the life lead as well, as well as the uh, damage percentage lead, or I should say that plus percentage here. So it's definitely in Aqua's favor here, as they are able to do some smart plays, they can make sure they see the way. Arise needs some good plays here if they want to take advantage and get a win here, as technically Arise is Still on a losing streak, if I'm not mistaken. I think they lost six in a row. Something to that extent here. So they can make it seven, even though it's a different season, but I guess they're the same team here. So we have Anju finally losing all three lives, but she opts to steal life from the team. Yoshiko finally goes lose all three lives, so she'll steal life from Ruby. So now Arais is down to her final three lives, while Aqua First Years has one to spare. But Super says at a really high percentage here, so she can definitely get finished off if she's not careful. There goes Hanamaru, and we're back uh, even on lives now. And there goes Super Saiyan, there goes Arena, and that should finish it off. As the small chance of Arise coming back in this game looks like it should be over, as it's just impossible to fight a 3v1 here. Anjus looks like. Nope, she will live, as she was able to survive that attack by Hanamaru. And we have a shield by Ruby, and then Andrew gets launched, and looks like she'll get finished off by Yoshiko.
So that is another L for a rides. Maybe I should change her name to Up Lies when now. Good puns by me. Anyways. So unfortunate for us as they continue their losing streak somehow. Guess that's seven in a row? I have to double check that, but Super again, as I said, didn't doesn't do that great overall usually. I didn't know that was pretty decent usually though. Sometimes she does very, very well and there, there are times where she had an insane KOs to false ratio. But here she does okay. And then we have Anju, which did not that great either <laughs> with 2 and 4. But I guess the Aqua first years, Ruby doing pretty well here 2 and 1 and Hanamar getting 4 and 2 doing very well. And then Yoshiko, for her, doing getting even is actually honestly pretty good. Sometimes she likes to die a lot. So... Or I should say fall a lot. But overall, she did good for her, I guess. But, you know, having a full team of not going negative is pretty good. So, overall, good job by Aqua as they claim the victory. Alrighty, welcome to the fourth battle where we have the third years from Nichigaku as well as the third years for Aqua. We will see who is the better third years. Okay, we are on the Kirby stage. As you can see, what is it that? I think they call the halberd in the background. All right, be, the girls need to be careful to make sure they get on stage and not let it take off without them, as sometimes they tend to stay on the ground. And it looks like no one will be foolish enough to stay down on there. So early on here, we have kind of taking quite a beating here at 67. But beyond that, the rest of the Nichigaku girls is doing pretty good here in percentage-wise. Let's we'll see how that keeps up. We have Kanan doing not that great in percentage as well as Mari who's taking quite a beating early on here. Mari of course was the league MVP last year. We'll see if she's able to maintain that form or if she's going to regress which is somewhat possible here. So we have Emma who was not able to recover as she was spent all of her movement trying to get back up and said only hit someone which hurt them a lot but in the end got Emma killed so I guess that was worth it. And we have Mari falling soon afterwards. And there goes Cotton. So now we have Nijigaku down two lives to the one lives down for Aqua's third years here. But there goes Cotton, and now we're back to even on lives here as both teams have lost two lives here. Dai is doing pretty well here as she's gotten two kills already and still has not died yet. But she of course is at a really high percentage here so we have to be careful as a big hit can finish her off for this life here. Yeah, Mari looks like she'll be able to recover back on stage here. And we got Kanato who gets launch off and loses a life here. Now Nichigaku is down one life per character, down three lives total. And then we have Emma and Kanato starting to rack up in the center here. Oh, looks like Emma will not be able to make it, nor will Kanan. And that will put Nichigaku in the deep hole as now they are down two, three lives to their opponents here. Dai still has not lost her first life. That will be very costly to Nijigaku as they are not able to finish her off. Mari finally goes down to her final life here. But Nijigaku really needs to finish off Dai now if they want to have a chance here. Alright, they manage to finish off Dai. But we, they have to avoid a lot of damage here as well. There goes Kanan, so... Wait, Kanan going down here. It, this is not actually that far apart. Now they're back even on lives here. Of course, Aquas has the, the advantage in percentage here. Oh, yikes. There goes two lives for Aquas. Dai will opt to give another life, so it's not a 3v, uh, 3v1 here, even though she had two lives. That makes it so much easier for her to deal with all that now that she's not getting triple teamed. But of course, now she's down to her final life. But that was a horrendously costly play back there for Aquas as they lost two lives here. So Nichigaku all are down to the final lives. As it looks like I believe Kanata gave away one of her lives to Emma to keep this number advantage on opponents. Which could be a pretty good idea as having the extra person makes it incredibly difficult for the other person to do anything. And there goes Emma getting herself killed. And there goes Kanan getting herself killed. Unbelievable. Ichigaku just blowing that massive chance of winning here. And now Kanata's all by herself. 
And now she needs to beat up Conant. Conant. And no, it does not happen. Wow. That's just... I, I really thought Ichigaku had it after they end up really hurting Aqua third years with those who lost lives there. But they decided to kill themselves, two of them of their lives there, trying to punish their opponent and finish it off. But they got greedy and they punished for they got punished for that, so just just sad to be honest. But overall, I mean I would still perform pretty well. It's just some two big swing plays that really turned the favor into for one team versus the other. In terms of damage differential, uh Mari did not do that well here to be honest. But Honestly, it was a pretty close match here. No one did that abysmal, but no one did that great either. So, honestly, a good match from both teams here, and it was pretty close. Alright, welcome to the fifth battle. So, of course, we have the second years for Aqua, as well as the second years for Nijigaku. I'm kind of surprised how many people in the same years are fighting each other. But that's just... It's random, so I think it's, it's just a coincidence. But anyways, let's see how these girls fare off. Alright, so we're on... Was this a Mara stage? Yeah, I think this is a Mara stage. This is what I can remember here. So early on in this battle here, we have... Ichigaku second year is taking quite a beating here. Rico is the only one to avoid quite a beating early on here. Still had a pretty low 33%. Kind of half of most of other people here. I taken quite a beating on early on here. But Chica's taking a... Pretty equal beating here as now they're both about 100 cents here. We got a big hit for Chica on both Ayumu. Oh, look, my goodness. Ayumu did not make the recovery here, but Chica died, so I I guess it's something here. So we're down one life on both teams as Ayumu and Chica die about the, around the same time. And there goes Riko as she was finished off here. So we have I and Setsuna both having one kill early on here. And we have... Who got the kill on the other team? Chica, yeah, Chica got the, other, the kill on the other team here. So guys made the cover. Yo went for a big shot, but she missed, and now she got punished. But it looks like she'll stay alive for now. Got a big hit on Yo, but she looks like she'll stay alive for a little bit longer. There goes Ayumu as she manages to finish off on our life for Chica. Setsuna and I both are holding on to the first lights here. And there goes Yo who was holding on to original life but she just falls. Setsuna makes the recovery as Setsuna has two kills here so far. And there goes I. She finally loses her first life here. Setsuna gets launched but she will stay alive here. She gets a grab and a kick on top of Yo. So we currently have quite a lead here for Nichigo because they have a two life lead. And there goes Riko as she loses a life and Setsuna finally loses her first life. Now everyone has lost a life so far. Now Aqua second girl, second years are down at two lives here and looks like Yo will make the car beat. That looked pretty close. She, she made quite a mistake there but she was able to cover back on stage. We have Ayumu who's getting really high in the percentages here as well as Chika but that's her final life so she goes down. She might opt to steal life and she will have to steal life from Yo as she lost her final life. So now I close it down to their last three lives. No lives to spare here. We have Riku who's not having the best game here. And there goes Ayumu. So now that Ayumu's down to her final life, we have two extra spare lives for Nijigaku, which should be plenty as they have a pretty monstrous lead on the Aqua Girls here. I makes a recovery back on stage. Setsun gets launched, but looks like she should be able to make it backstage. And ooh, my okay. So Yo is now been eliminated here, as now she has no lives available and none to steal. We have Setsun with only life to spare now, as I believe I died pretty recently. And I go Setsun, no lives to spare for Nijigaku. As under down alter five lives, Ayumu at a pretty high percentage here. And there goes Chica, and Setsuna just kills herself there at only 7% here. That's That still should not give Riko any reasonable chance of winning here despite that suicide. 
<laughs> that, that was pretty scary as Ayuma and I looked like they were both about to kill themselves there, but I guess not. They're trying to make it really difficult. Ooh, and Ayuma getting just two hands and slams on the face of her opponent. Making it so they cannot recover and Ayumu being savage and finishing it off here. So, congratulations to Nijigaku as they get the win here. Of course, Ayumu getting the most kills, 5 and 2. Pretty good record here. But beyond that, not too bad. I guess Jigen did a little bit worse here. But everyone else, still quite fine. But, of course, the MVP obviously in this battle goes to Ayumu. But we had a pretty de decent performance by Rico. She wasn't able to get the kills, but she definitely shot out the damage here. But overall, good game. Last but not least, we have the Mew third years versus the first years of Mew. So this is going to be a battle amongst Mew's girls here, so we'll have to see. Are the first years better, or are the third years better? So, of course, on the third years, they had Nozomi, which was the league worst KD here, but we'll see if she has a good bounce next season. Ellie gets killed early on here by Ren. Yikes. So that is an early advantage for the first years as they're trying to show that the third years cannot rule over them. But we'll have to see if they respond. You know, Niku doesn't like to take orders from other people. And Niku has been pretty good for the... She was on BB, so she was generally the one who carried him. But Maki was also pretty good at times, sometimes, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But generally, she did show up. But Nika was kind of the anchor of that team, so we'll have to see how she shows up, as she's been pretty good from last season. So we have Nico at already at 141% here. Any big hit, and she should be finished, and there goes Maki showing who's boss to Nico. Wouldn't expect anything less from Maki. Now we have Haneo, who is at 150% here now, and a really high percentage. We'll have to see how long she'll be able to stay alive with such higher percentages here but so far no one on the first years have died yet and Ellie's already lost two lives here putting the third years at a really big disadvantage early on my goodness and there goes Nozomi as the first years are really beating up the third years right now and Honey is at 200% here and she also has a kill and there we go, Hanyo finally falls as the first life for the first years finally happens to go away. So, now we have Maki who's at 135%, really getting higher percentages here, strong hit will finish her off. We have a lot of girls fighting on that ledger trying to prevent anyone from getting on, but it looks like Rin will not be able to make it. And there goes Maki, it's not the first years, all have finally lost their life here. That puts the 30s at a slightly... Higher chance of winning here, but Ellie is still down in life, so they are still behind him. One, one, one life so far. Oh, will Miko be able to make the recovery? Oh, she's trying, and she is not able to. And now it was Maki. Oh my goodness, do not. <laughs> a lot of them are getting st caught off of that side here, and now that just puts the third years with just one life each for Nico and Nozomi. Ellie has been eliminated. Lost three lives and didn't even get single kill here, and being quite a detriment for her team. We have the first years who has five lives available here, so it's not reasonable to assume that the third years will be able to get back in this fight. So there's always next week for them. So it's just only a matter of time as the first years should have this in the bag, unless some insanely amazing play to come out of nowhere here. So we do have Hanyo losing our life here as Nozomi was able to get a kill. So now that evens it up a tiny bit more for the two lives here but Nico's at a really high percentage now. So that's going to make it a lot more difficult. And there, the threes are definitely trying and there goes Nico and there goes Nozomi. And that does it for the third years. So the first years shows who is boss at least for today. As Maki gets 4 kills here and Rin does pretty well with 3. Of course, it looks like Nico and Ellie both did not perform here. Oddly enough, Nozomi did even though she was the league worst last time. So that's good for Nozomi as she finally shows up. We'll see how long she shows up and maybe she's turning a new leaf and she wants to be good at this time. Or maybe it was her team composition. Of course, she was part of Lilyweight which was the worst. But honestly, she did, she did a lot better than what I expected. 
unfortunately for Nico and Ellie, they did not perform as they got a combined one and six, which is of course awful. Not customly awful, but still pretty bad. But of course, the Maki and Rin, the Beat and Angel duo here, showed up and did very well. And Anya just well stayed alive, which was honestly I guess pretty helpful as she was took quite a beating and only lost what two lives here, but overall still very good. So. That's more or less what I had for today. Let me know what, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I, if you enjoyed these kind of battles, of course, I'll try to do this weekly. That's what I did last time. I tried to do it at like Wednesdays at Central Time, 6 p.m. I might try to do that. We'll have to see. But that's my goal. I know the views died off really quickly, but you know, if people enjoy, it, and I guess that's what matters. And this is all for fun, and you know. Maybe you can find other people who like this and enjoy this kind of stuff and whatnot. But let me know what else you think I could do to make this better. I want to try to make this enjoyable as possible for you guys. And we'll have to see how this continues on. But yeah. Let me know who is your favorite team. Who are you rooting for and who you think is going to make into the playoffs here. Of course, it's just way too early. We only have one battles each. And no, I'm not good at the game. so. Don't expect me to necessarily make it to the playoffs unless I get carried by my team here. But you know, I enjoy playing it, so that's great. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to catch you guys in another video soon.